called a better road, mate. London town. This is the Lady of Portobello, which I painted about a year ago. Uh, it's just basically a chick there having some rosé champagne. You only really notice it if you're walking along this bit above you. I prefer that to things that are just in your face. 25% of the UK's graffiti or street art output comes out of Bristol, and Bristol is now probably the main city in the UK for street art. I can go to Bristol and I can hang out, and there might be like 20 artists in a pub. Bristol is more of a community of artists working together to promote the cause. I use slaps, yeah, I use a lot of street stickers, occasionally tagging, depending if I've had a few drinks, but mainly for me it's big scale paintings and then go to Halls of Fame and paint graffiti. If I'm abroad I do a lot more illegal work. In London or in England it's a bit more tricky because in the 80s I got caught as like one of the main UK illegal writers. So now if I get caught, I have two kids, it's, I get fucked up. They'll put me down for a conspiracy. And there's cameras everywhere here. Writers come to London specifically because it's more difficult to paint. It's like the holy grail of Europe to paint a train in England. So this bit here we're coming through, this is called the West Way. This is traditionally a whole big Jamaican area. Futura came here with The Clash in the early 80s and they did the first ever graffiti underneath the West Way up here. Oh, there's a classic Banksy one up here. Me and him were tight, he came under and we took him up and he's got a bit too cool for school. Stencils was taboo. He was kind of quick on it. A lot of the tricky guys who don't like him, they've been putting battery acid down the back of him. It was all freehand skills, and if you tried to cheat in any way, like using sellotape or anything, it was always taboo. Under the West Way, you've got uh, Pure Evil up on the roof, David Shillingshaw here, Banksy's studio used to be behind here. And we had the subway as well, so it's a good spot here as well. Isn't it? When Subway Art came through, I was a punk rocker. I saw this thing and it was just like, boom. It will always be that picture of Scheme lying on the third rail, like that, in front of his piece with the wild star there. It was instant. 3D was one of the first graffiti artists in the UK and kind of took me under his wing when I was younger. And then obviously Bio and the Tax crew came over. As soon as they showed me their stuff, I was off practicing. You couldn't get pink, so we used to have to uh, mold nozzles together and mix up the cans. You spray the air out of one, mix up the pink. Turned up with loads of pinks, but they were all mixed, and everyone was like, wow, would, like, where'd you get that colour? You can't get it, you've got to make it. There's a massive friction between the graffiti artist and the street artist. The whole street art thing is quite, I see it, it's a bedroom game. To be a true graffiti artist, you've got to get your ass out there, you've got to get fucking down and gritty, because you won't get any respect unless you're out and be seen painting constantly, and you've got to get up, massively up, but up with style. Any graffiti artists cannot deny they would paint illegally. I maybe do more permission walls than I used to do, but that's because they're available. A wall's a wall, I paint it. Mr. Brainwash? I mean, I don't know, I never even watched that exit through the gift shop. I, I'm not even bothered about that. He's doing a pastiche of what's happening, and he's kind of like, I'd say fair shout to him, he's you know, making a crit out of it, but I don't think it's that particularly any good. I personally like classic New York wild styles. Some people hide like style behind technical ability. When you can see the letters and see what it says, you know that guy's got funk. So this is Westbourne Park Bridge. Used to be where all the writers used to hang out and watch the trains. This is a classic bridge. There's a few classic photos so you can see obviously where this curve is. This is Trellick Tower here, yeah? It was called the Tower of Doom because there were so many suicides and people were jumping off it. But now you can't buy a flat here for love the money. Wait till you see the Hall of Fame down here though. So this is Trellick Tower Hall of Fame. This is probably the main West London one at the moment. As you, but it gets dubbed, I mean there's layers on layers on here. Revoke's painted here. There's painters everywhere. There's probably guys painting right now actually. There is in fact. Now watch out, it's fruit. There's some kids just chucking fruit down. They do it quite regularly. It's fun for them. You know what I mean? It's lucky it's fruit. And you don't want a glass bottle coming off there. Come and have a look over at these guys. Oh, this is my man False from Italy. What's up, Gads? You good? Yeah, thank you. Looks wicked, man. But this wall here was like in the 83, 84 was done top to bottom in it, so it's one of the spiritual homes of graffiti. This is Zombie, it's classic West London. Three Sega's a guy who's banged up. Cots, CK1, there's a guy who died recently in Thailand. Everyone puts him up. Act One's a bit of a rude boy. Towns here is amazing. Towns got some sick skills. But BYU, I had a down with Chino from NYC, so uh, if Chino's out there, Obviously, I love a piece to stay up as long as possible, but the way it is, like here, if I did, I did a paint here like a week ago. 
it's gone. You know, Ben Iron said a thing like, as long as it looks good in 72 DPI, it doesn't matter, you know? To me, the most important thing is the pencil sketch. One thing I gotta say, yeah. West London, yeah. See the sunset. When that sun sets, I'm setting over Bristol. That's where I come from. So you don't see that in East London. You get the most beautiful sunsets down the train track here.